Hello, my amazing people. I greet you according to your time. If it is your first time and you like what we are doing here, kindly subscribe. Put on your notification bell. To all notifications is very, very important because it will enable you to know when we upload a new video. Here we react to all forms of videos. We educate, we inform the members of the public about what is happening. And to you, YouTube, I appreciate you for creating this wonderful platform that we are using to disseminate information. At the same time, I put a disclaimer that here in Linda's TV show, we do not promote violence, we do not promote hate speech, we do not promote misleading information. Rather, we are here to educate, inform the members of the public and also to remind you to that a call for self-determination is never a call for war. Every country in the world have this. We are going to get our freedom and we are going to do everything possible for this particular freedom to be achieved. And I'm going to share it with you the story of Israel, which everybody knows about Israel, but many people do not know what Israel went through. And I will start with a man called Theodor Hazel. The Theodor Hazel was, should I say, a founder of the Zionist movement. Hazel was an Austro-Hungarian Jewish. He was a journalist, a lawyer, writer, and a political activist who was the father of the modern political Zionism. Many people are only hearing Israel, Israel, but they don't know what actually transpired that led to Israel becoming an independent state. Hazel formed the Zionist organization and promoted Jewish immigration to Palestine in an effort to form a Jewish state, in an mm -hmm. effort to form a Jewish state today, that is Jewish state called Israel, state of Israel. Due to his Zionist work, he is known in the Hebrew cause, a visionary of the state. He is specifically mentioned even in the Declaration of Israel, Israel Independence. This man was mentioned and is officially referred to as the spiritual father of the Jewish state. It is very important that our people, both especially the global ones, understand that your gullibility cannot stop the liberation of Biafra this year. Hazel was born in Pest, Kingdom of Hungary, to a prosperous newly Jewish family. After a brief legal career in Vienna, he became the Paris correspondent of the Viennese newspaper. He confronted the anti-Semitic event in Vienna. I hope you understand what anti-Semitism means. He reached the conclusion that anti-Jewish sentiment would make Jewish assimilation impossible. This man single-handedly rose up, stood up because of the anti-Jewish activities across the world. He stood up one man and in 1896, Hazel published the pamphlet, The Judean Start in which he elaborated his vision for a Jewish homeland. Because of the attack, the anti-Jewish anti-Semitism, he had a vision. His ideas attracted international attention and rapidly established Hazel as a major figure in the Jewish world. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Are you seeing some similarity in what we are doing today? The kidnap of Mazin Amdikano and the rise of Simon Ekpa and the Biafra government in exile. In 1897, Hazel convened what we call the first Zionist Congress in Basel. First ever. My fellow Biafrans, do you see some similarity? In 2023, we had the first ever Biafra Convention in Finland. First ever in the history of our freedom fighting. This man convinced the first ever Zionist Congress in Basel. Switzerland. In Switzerland, and was elected the president of the Zionist organization. He began a series of diplomatic initiatives. I am talking about 18 something, when Usman Danfodio was conquering the northern Nigeria. When Usman Danfodio was killing the Alsas, this man was busy having a vision for a Jewish state of Israel. And then he began the diplomatic initiative to build support for Jewish state. I am telling you that we are not land anywhere, but that was a vision. That was a vision, and they pursued the vision. Some people who don't know anything how the world works will be telling you today who is the government, which is government is supporting you, which state is supporting you, which how can somebody support you 
when you are showing that you are an idiot? How can somebody support you when you are dependent on people and you have no thinking of your own? How can people support you when you have shown to be a slave to ordinary nomadic people who don't know what is civilization? But today, we have changed the narrative. Now they understand we are not slave to nomadic. Now they understand there must be a need to support the liberation and the freedom of Biafra. Now they understand that people of integrity have risen up to show that Biafra has people of integrity and standard. He began a series of diplomatic initiatives to build support for Jewish state, appealing unsuccessfully to German emperor. He appealed to German emperor was not successful. And Ottoman Sultan he appealed to all these people was, it was unsuccessful. At the 6th Zionist Congress in 1903, they have had the first one, the first, the second one, the third one, and the sixth one in 1903. Hazel presented the Uganda scheme. He even went as far as trying to build the state of Jewish state in Uganda of today. Are you aware of that? Are you aware that Israel had a vision to establish a state in Uganda? Present day Uganda. Mm -hmm. That is people, I don't know how many of you, and of course the gullible ones who are looking at what we're doing today are stupid and whatever. I don't know how many of them are aware of this, that Israel wanted to establish a state in Uganda, present Uganda. Championed by Hazel, this was endorsed by Colonial Secretary Joseph Chamberlain on behalf of the British government. The proposal, which sought to create a temporary refugee for the Jews, ultimately rejected. Hazel died, this man died at the age of 44 in 1904 and was buried in Vienna. Now, let us also go fast forward after the Hazel attempt to establish Jewish state in Uganda, which was supposed to be the temporary refugee uh, place because of the anti-semitism anti-jewish that was a rampage all over the world just like they are trying to annihilate the Afrans because of the light we carry are you surprised that what we are facing today in nigeria is exactly what the jewish people face all over the world then israel declaration of independence i want you people to understand that the declaration of independent state of israel was signed by 38 individuals. 38, 38 signed the document of the Declaration of the State of Independence of, of Israel. Are you aware of that? Are you aware that it was only 38 people that signed to declare Israel as an independent state? You don't know. Now you are knowing it today. I'm explaining it to you. Formally, Declaration of the Establishment of State of Israel was proclaimed on the 14th May 1948 by a man called David Ben Gurion, the executive head of the World Zionist Organization. The Zionist organization that this Hazel founded, chairman of the Jewish Agency for Palestine and later the first Prime Minister of Israel. It declared the establishment of a Jewish state to be known as the State of Israel, which would come into effect on termination of the British mandate. Our own British mandate terminated in 2014. That was when the British mandate terminated. When they say you have 100 years after that we decide. Nobody is talking about the agreement and how Nigeria become a country from amalgamation to the independence to fake independence to today present Nigeria. They put it under the carpet because nobody have risen up to challenge them. Nobody have risen up to question the existence of Nigeria. Until now, we are questioning it under the Biafra government in exile. I will question it with gun. We will question it with bomb. We will question it with civil with civility. We will question it diplomatically and we will question it politically. And that is the multi-dimensional approach. That thing they are avoiding to discuss. That particular existence of Nigeria on continuation of Nigeria, they have been avoiding to discuss. Will be forced to discuss. They will be forced with the activities and the actions of the Biafra government in 2024. That's where we are going. That's why all these shenanigans, all this their uh, regional government, all this nonsense you see happening are happening today. And they have not actually started hitting the point because the point remain the continual existence of Nigeria as a country. They are not discussing it. What was the agreement of 1914? What was the agreement they have independent? What happened for after the 100 years of Nigeria? 
Nobody is discussing it. And we have seen Nigeria has become the worst and evil state. A terrorist state it has become and such state should not be allowed to stay even the next minute. That's why Biafra has decided to fight their way out. Not, this, not the type of war we fought in the 67. That was a very big lesson that we have learned. And today we are fighting differently. I am telling you, if this liberation of Biafra is going to take us the next 20 years after 2nd of December, we are ready for it. But let us continue so that you understand how freedom is fought. Because many of you have been in this struggle for the past 20 years. Actually, was following people who do not know what they are doing. And it, either they were being sabotaged, especially from Azin and Bikano, who set up the indigenous people of Biafra, surrounded himself with criminals who were not actually fighting for freedom. Now, the event of the termination of the British mandate, Israel immediately wanted to declare their independence. Immediately that termination of the British mandate, on the same night, the event is celebrated annually, the declaration of Israel. Now, let me also inform you that the possibility of a Jewish homeland in Palestine had been a goal of the Zionist organization, the Zionist founded by Hazel since the late 19th century. In 1917, British Foreign Ministry Arthur Belfort stated in a letter to the British Jewish community leader, Walter Lord, that His Majesty government views with favor the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people and will use the best endeavor to facilitate the achievement of this object. It's being clearly understood that nothing shall be done which may prejudice the civil and religious right of existing non-Jewish community in Palestine or the right and political status enjoyed by Jews in other countries. Now they are supporting the establishment of the state of, of Israel. What happens to you that is yet to get support from the British government. Have you asked yourself that? Because they see that you have been conquered. Maybe you have been conquered. Maybe you don't have the balls to fight for what is your right. Maybe because you are an African and they have come to understand that all of you are idiot. But we are here to tell them that we are not idiot actually. We are here to tell them that we are even more advanced, more brutal, getting our freedom, even like they will ever imagine. That is what this generation, the government I am the prime minister is trying to send the message we are sending to the world. Our freedom is so precious that we are ready to burn Nigeria down for us to be free. Through this letter, it become known to the powerful declaration. British government policy officially endorsed Zionism. Now, without the effort of Hazel and those that follow him, will British ever take them serious? The answer is no. Will anybody ever take State of Israel or the Jews seriously? Nobody will take them serious. But they stood up. From nowhere, a man from born in Hungary family, a man born in Hungary stood up and said, I am forming the organization of Zionism. That is what led to the freedom of Israel today. That is what made Israel become the powerful, the most powerful, one of the most powerful countries in the world. By one single man, vision. And let me also inform you that this was necessary because of the violence against jews all over the world just like we are facing it today in nigeria and solution has come through the government of biafra and let me also inform you that before the, the declaration of independent state of israel there was draft declaration draft one declaration draft two and then declaration draft three they have the first draft the second draft, the third draft. I want you to understand that Biafra today, we have already the first draft and we are already in the second draft. We are not necessarily going to go to the third draft and like they did, but I'm just telling you the multidimensional approach. Remember that a few days ago, I have used Finland and I have compared what Finland did and what Biafra are doing. And I'm using Israel for you to understand that we have captured everything and it is woto woto. Israel had their first declaration draft. That first declaration draft was done by somebody called Berenson. Zuvi Berenson or V Berenson. One person drafted it, the declaration. The second draft was done by about five men. Five men drafted the second draft of the declaration of, of the state of Israel. The third draft was done by 
four men. I am telling you, after that, the declaration follows, which were signed by 38 persons. Now, drafting the test, the first draft of the declaration was made by this Berenson, the legal advisor of the uh, trade union, and later a justice of the Supreme Court, at the request of Pinchas Rosen. A revised second draft of the declaration was made by three lawyers, a Baham, and of course, another one, David Rames. Meeting which include David and many others produce the final test. Today, the Afra government have what we call the Declaration Drafting Committee. Declaration Drafting Committee, headed by Dr. Bryce Inokoma. Exactly the same thing. Now, you are seeing similarity in the state, in the pathway for this freedom and independent state of Israel. You have also seen similarity and the pathway to the declaration of the independent state of Finland. You are also going to see another similarity from another country when I'm going to mention them. This is to tell you, and when you look at this pathway, they are not the same. The Finland and the Finland pathway to, to freedom and Israel pathway to freedom is not the same. But what we are doing has similarity with Israel, with Finland. And there are many more which I'm going to, to tell you. Well, what I'm using is called the multi-dimensional approach. Nigeria can never ever escape that. So we will make sure that if we, this fail, the other one will not fail. And if this one fail, the other one will not fail. And that's exactly what we are doing because Nigeria is a complex country. Because of the vested interest of the world powers, it needed a very complex solution. And we found it. We found it. We have solved the mathematics and we found X. And they don't even know that that mathematics is cooling in our fridge. So what we do is we are going one after the other to take the mat the solution, the uh, equation, the what we use to solve this mathematics and apply it to our everyday activities in the liberation of Biafra. Now, I want you also to understand that the vote of the 12th May 1945 was convened to vote on the Declaration of Independence. Three of 13 members were absent. They had 13 members to vote and three of these 13 members, they were absent and some of them were being blocked in besieged Jerusalem. The difference today is that we are not only in exile, we are also in the homeland. We have, those, so when they tell you, you are in exile, laugh at them. We have government in the homeland called the Biafra de facto government. When they mock you that, oh, these people are doing, of course, they are not, they are no longer laughing. That's why you see the increase of attack and propaganda against us, which I warned Biafrans a few days ago. I said, there is going to be an increased propaganda in Nigeria media. Don't fall for it. And that's, you see what's happening now, because they have come to realize that it's like these people are not joking. Up. It's like these people are getting attention even in the, in the United States. It's like these people are having, you know, higher level meeting with the United States Congress, United States government officials, and all that. Too. This is no longer something should be that we should ignore. That's what you see happening on social media. Don't be distracted. I am not distracted. Actually, the more this propaganda come, the more I get energy. So it is what is giving me energy. Is that propaganda? And once that propaganda stop coming, I will manufacture something that will make them to start talking. So what am I saying? The meeting started at about 13. 45 in the afternoon and ended midnight decision to declare the independent state of uh, israel now the decision was between accepting the american proposal for truce which means at this point there was already Kanono, there was already fighting between israel and whoever that hates them and america was pressuring israel for truce while israel is contemplating declaring their independent or accepting the pressure coming from America for a truce. And if they had accepted America for a truce, Israel would not be an independent state today. today. I want you to listen attentively. America was telling Israel, making a proposal for a truce. Israel was discussing between declaring their independence or listening to America. So they decided not to listen to America. The later option was put to a vote with six of the 10 members present supporting it. So out of the 13% that should be voting, three was absent. Out of that three that was absent, it remained only 10%. So now that 10% now decided to vote whether to declare Israel as a state, uh, independent state or to agree on America proposal to for a truce. 
So they put it to vote. Now, six persons voted to declare independence of Israel. Four persons voted not to declare, to follow America. Are you listening to me? How many? Four versus six. Only two persons make the difference. What you see Israel become today. So when you are talking about Biafra, or people are telling you don't do this, don't listen to them. One person can make a difference. One person. Now, I am telling you this history so that you will now compare what we are doing, where we are today, just within two years. And you see that what we are doing is divine. When God said the time has come, even if you call Simon Ekpa a witch, you witch will possess me and we deal with you. And I will accept the witch to possess me. Some of them say I'm a witch. I agree. And I accept it. And you know what witch can do. Now, six persons voted for the declaration. Four persons voted against it. And their names are there for everybody in Israel to see who were against the declaration and who actually voted for it so which of the side of history are you supporting today which side of the history are you for biafra or are you against for biafra are we going to remember you as those who fought simon Ekma? at the end of the day when you see 24 hour electricity we will be looking at your name somewhere in the history book which side of the history are you going to be part of are you going to be part of those that their names will be written and their signature will be on the declaration of biafra document in finland 2024 because this history we are doing from 2023 uh, biafra convention first ever they never believed that actually you can have convention in exile we did it <laughs> they didn't believe that we were there. Oh, they say you are paying money to come to finland you come to finland we had many declaration including a helsinki declaration document which is the biafra charter we had the helsinki ambazonia declaration which is the alliance between biafra and ambazonia all those things are going to come later on in the history book and people are going to study how we have smarted the most ruthless and the terrorist country in africa now those who voted for the declaration of independence of, Biaf of uh, israel now after that they now went into final wording of the of the declaration. The draft test was submitted for approval to the meeting of the Motez Ham in Tel Aviv on 14th May. The meeting started again around 1.15 in the afternoon and, and, and ended 3 o'clock, an hour before the declaration was due to be made. Despite ongoing disagreement, members of the council anonymously voted in favor of the final test of the declaration. During the process, there were two major debates countering on issues of border and religion. I want you to understand that the state of Israel, when they were debating about their border and religion, they decided to omit anything border. Do you understand? Israel declaration do not, did not have a border. They don't know the map of Israel, of the state of Israel. But therefore today, we have our map defined. Subject to whoever that want to dispute it, subject to the a democrat, the most widely accepted democratic system which is referendum which we have already conducted and conducted so today biafra has a map biafra has state structure biafra has every government institution put in place but israel declaration don't have a map israel don't have a map and they decided to declare independent with that map and they said the un can now decide what the map are what the map will be i am telling you this is something that you need to understand how freedom is being fought you don't allow people to ride you the borders were not specified in the declaration although its 14th paragraph indicated a willingness to cooperate in the implementation of the un partition plan the original draft have declared that the borders will be decided by the united nation partition plan why it was supported by some people it was opposed by another and some other people within the israel cabinet there we accepted the ua resolution but the arab did not they are preparing to make a war on us if we defeat them and capture western galilee and territory on both sides of the road of jerusalem this area will become part of the state are you listening so many things were not defined by the state of israel during their declaration today we have met every requirement we have done yeah, more than any country in the world before or pre-declaration period we have met the statehood we have made the categories to be recognized according to the montevideo convention on statehood we overqualified 
We have built our own defense forces. We have our own liberation army. We have state to state, 40 states of the United States of Biafra. We have administrative administrators, state executive council running each state. We have also developed the state structure as we are adopting the confederating state of Biafra. And it's going to be a confederation state. So everybody should understand that. Do not listen to what Nigeria is trying to sell to you. That it is undoable. Do not listen where they say, oh, they are just in exile. We are not in exile. We control them. We control the territory of Biafra. We are not in exile. We are also in the homeland controlling our territory, making sure that we delegitimize Nigeria as fast as possible. Today, nobody will carry gun and walk freely under Nigeria. You'll be gone down. And if you succeed, even if you are walking, uh, carrying gun as a Nigeria, you'll be looking left and right. You, you're not going to have peace. I will never give them peace until they withdraw from our land. Our main objective and aim today is to make sure that Nigeria withdraw their terrorists they call army, the terrorists they call police, the terrorists they call air force that are coming to bombard innocent people in Biafra land. That is our target. And this target must be met. After December, we must make sure that we have nothing else to do other than neutralizing the presence of Nigeria in our land, including attacking the presence, their presence, their offices, because this is where they stay and plan and execute the attack on Biafra people, the terrorism against us, against our women and children. Those offices, barracks, must not be allowed to stay under Nigeria in Biafra territory. And that's the next thing we are going. So 2nd of December is a day that the beginning of the end of Nigeria within our territory will start. My people, do not allow anybody to dictate to you that what we are doing now have not been done before. We don't need them to have been done before. We develop the system that works for us. We develop the way we are going to leave Nigeria. And it is only us that this particular system and approach is going to work for. Nobody else. Because nobody else has been subjected to the manner of system that we have subjected to in Nigeria. My brothers and sisters of Biafra, rejoice! The days ahead will be light. And Nigeria will know that those people they killed in the 60s have possessed all of us. And when we don't have answers to many questions, they give the answers to us. That's why they can never understand what is happening until the end of this, of this road. I am standing very strong and the Biafra will be declared in this country and we are going to defend it with our guns. We are going to defend it with our men that are very gallantly waiting for a day that the show will begin. I welcome you in Australia. Those of you listening to me in Australia, remember the most important thing we have now is the support from the IOU, from the fundraising, until those people who are hiding somewhere thinking that we are joking will understand that this is not actually a joke. You needed to come out to do more than the Israel did. And in the next 10 years, those who who are mocking us today will be put to shame. People in Australia, remember that what you are doing today, you are making a history that will never ever be forgotten. As I was reading and mentioning names of people who made the Israel independent possible, you are also making the same history for yourself because your names will be mentioned just like when we begin to talk about those who supported this, this liberation of Biafra from Australia, we we'll begin to mention your names. These your names will come one way or the other in the Biafra document. It can never be wiped away from the surface of the earth. We will write how we visited state to state, country to country, soliciting for fund, and they were laughing at us. They will tell you how Simon Epa was so, so stubborn and didn't listen to anybody. And from nowhere. They were calling him that smart thing in Finland. But today, look at the change of things. It is no longer that smart thing in Finland. You see that that smart thing in Finland has grown like a big python, swallowing all the evil in Nigeria. And it is going to happen koro koro in their eyes. They will say, what were we doing? This guy don't go foul. That is how it is going to end. I am telling you the fact, this thing that is going to happen in Finland from 29th of November to the 3rd of December, will be the highest history made in humankind for freedom fighting. I welcome you all. Thank you for inviting me in Australia. Let God touch your mind to understand that we need... Thank you so much for sticking to this video to the end.
Like I said before, now it's time for us to go to the comment section to air our mind and our opinion. Say what you think about this video and this platform. Do it constructively. Share this video. Like, subscribe, and also continue to watch Linda's TV show because this is the home of news. Until I see you again in my next video. Remember, for now, I would say bye-bye.